Hello, I'm Diana Bell and welcome back to the Museum of Time at Holt Whistle in Northumberland. Today I'm going to be talking about clock springs and weights. This one's quite heavy. These are the two things that make mechanical clocks work. Now, we we'll start off with clock weights. They come in various shapes and sizes. You'll be able to see behind me all the cuckoo clocks. And on these we'll have the weights that makes, gives the power to make the clocks go. To operate them, you will have to pull the chain to the top and the weight of that makes the clock tick and the other one makes it cuckoo. Now in lots of different clocks there is various weights. These ones are off a big cuckoo clock. You can see they're a lot bigger than those weights. Yes, this is because the cuckoo clock is a bigger movement. Now all the weights come in various shapes and sizes as you can tell by these. These are quite heavy as well. That's off a reproduction Belgian clock. And this is off a very old cottage clock. Now we're getting a lot bigger. And this is off a wall clock and it's quite heavy. Now this one, I will try and pick it up. This is off a very old grandfather clock. Oh, and it weighs a ton. You don't have to go to the gym when you work here, you just literally do weight lifting. So there are the weights, some of the weights that operate some clocks and you can get a lot more different kinds of weights than what I've shown here. Now we move on to main springs because as you know, a lot of clocks you have to wind up with the key and keys come in all different shapes and sizes. And another time I show you my big selection of clock keys and watch keys actually. Now there's different kinds of mainsprings and the way they are put into the clocks. This is a very little 30 hour clock and it's got a very small spring here but it's not inside a barrel, it is open. This one is the same, it's only small. But then you go on to a great big American clock like this one. It hasn't got its dial on so you can see inside and the springs are actually open as well, they're not inside a barrel. So that spring one there is that size absolutely giant. And you can tell when they are not fitted inside of barrels, they have that ring on the end that hooks on the post inside the clock. Now I've got lots of other springs here. All of these are for ones that are not to go inside mainspring barrels because they've got this round piece on the end. Now talking about mainspring barrels, here's a mainspring barrel and you can see that the mainspring is housed inside. To fit one of these you have to have a lot of strength. Now it's something I do struggle as, as a female watch and clock repairer. I just watched my dad doing this. You can get all kinds of various tools, you know, clock winding mainspring tools. But in the end, the old-fashioned way we found was easiest, brute strength. But unfortunately, some of these great big springs, I just cannot do. So a colleague of mine, who my dad trained, he puts the main springs in the barrels for me. That's the only downfall of being a female clock repairer, is when you have to deal with very big springs. Now this one also, you can see, it is a lot smaller, but that is a spring that's fitted inside the barrels. Now these come in lots of different shapes and sizes. This clock here, it, it is a Westminster chime, Dick Whittington chime, 
and it's in Michael Chai and you can choose whichever one you want. You can see on the front it's got three wines, one for the time, one for the strike and one that plays the tune every 15 minutes. So inside this one, instead of having the power operating the pendulum, it has a floating balance. You can see it flicking backwards and forwards. But the springs in these are very powerful. And also I've got a, one of our biggest mantle clocks here in the museum. I call this a Big Daddy. Now also inside of this, the main springs are inside barrels and they're absolutely huge. So if the springs went in this, I definitely wouldn't attempt to try and wind the springs inside of this one. I think I would do myself an injury and maybe the clock an injury as well. Now speaking of that, over the years we have had clock guys coming in with clocks that they have tried to take apart without letting the power of the mainspring down before they took the clock apart. So of course you can guess what would happen if you have a great big spring like that fully wound inside of a clock and then suddenly without it the tension being let down like that, the spring would just fly, break wheels and possibly your fingers as well. So I always say to people, whatever you do, let down the power of the mainspring before you do anything. And that was one of the first things my father taught me was to let mainsprings down. So that's my lesson for today. If any of you guys want to take a clock apart, please let down the power of the mainspring first. Otherwise, you could come a cropper and your clock will be absolutely broken. Now I'm going to demonstrate very briefly how you let down a mainspring. Hello, yes, on my knee, is an eight day standard Smith's strike. Now you can see here the main springs are inside of the barrels, there's two. One for the strike and, and one for the time. Now to let down, well firstly you have to secure the movement. I usually, my dad taught me just to secure it on your knee with the cloth. So you can keep it rigid. So when you put pressure on that, the clock doesn't go flying. So anyway, you put your key on the arbor and then you get a small screwdriver, wherever you want, and you turn the key so the click moves like that. And then you gently hold the key and you just move it a little bit at a time. You don't let go of the key, otherwise it'll go flying. And make sure the click goes back into the ratchet teeth just so you've got control of the power of the mainspring. Sometimes you have to watch because if a clock's been rigid and wound up as far as it can go for a long, long time, the springs can suddenly spring all of a sudden. And I've had a few uh, bruised fingers over the years and um, I call myself a professional, but you just don't know. Now you know when the mainspring is fully wound down because you can go like that and if you push that it doesn't do anything else. So that is fully down. So and you do the same with the other side. If there's three barrels in you, you do all of them. You do not just do one. So no matter how many barrels is in a clock you, you let all the mainsprings down. It goes for everyone. And it goes for every size of, of spring round, wound clock as well. Well, I hope you enjoyed my short talk about what powers mechanical clocks. So we are an independent business which incorporates our museum and repair side. Our museum side is fully dependent on donations from the public. 
If you would like to donate to our museum, please follow the links below. And look out for my next video, which will hopefully will be in about a week's time, and who knows what aspect of watches and clocks I'll be talking about. This is Diana Bell saying goodbye from the Museum of Time in Hot Whistle. Bye.